Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's so warm. It's so good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Develop at Ubisoft and Ubisoft Toronto Next. My name is Zach Cooper. I'm part of the communications team here off at Ubisoft Toronto, and we are so happy that you are all here with us tonight. Yes! Yes! And I gotta say, it's that kind of noise, that kind of energy, that kind of love that we're looking to carry on throughout the course of the evening. I will preface everything by saying we have several speeches tonight and several awards that we're gonna be giving out and we need to make sure that this vibe is good vibes only, that we're supportive, that we're showing love because a lot of time, energy and effort went into all of this and so much behind the scenes as well. I am honored to be your host for this evening. I've been at the studio for a little over 11 years now. From very humble beginnings to where we are now, we are very happy to have you all joining us this evening. Before we begin, let us take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered today. It is the traditional home and territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, which is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that all Torontonians are treaty people with responsibilities tied to Treaty 13 signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississauga and Chippewa bands as well as to the 1764 Covenant Chain Wampum Belt, a long-standing agreement between Indigenous peoples and the British Crown. As I mentioned, this is entirely a good vibes only event. We have lots of previous winners here with us tonight. I'd like to hear a little bit of noise from all of oh, oh. That is great. That is great. We have an action-packed evening for you. We're going to kick things off with Develop at Ubisoft. Uh, just a heads up for this event in particular, the winners were informed just about a month ago, but we did want to take this opportunity to come together to celebrate the finalists, the hard work that they've done, and obviously present some sweet trophies as well. So you'll be seeing a bunch of those. Ubisoft Toronto Next, you see that? Our 10th anniversary celebrating it tonight. Incredible stuff. We've got seven disciplines, seven careers starting fresh after this evening's events. And of course, we do have a mix and mingle. Some of that obviously got underway before we started here. There will be plenty of opportunity to do more of that, making new friends, eating some more food, just hanging out and keeping the fun times going until 8 o'clock. Before all that, though, we do have a couple of important speeches to kick things off. We are going to open tonight's festivities with our managing director, Istvan Tajne. <laughs> Hello, hello. No one does good vibes like Zach. So, you know, I'll try to keep that alive. So, thank you very much all for coming and celebrating the two great initiatives that are Ubisoft Toronto Next and Develop at Ubisoft. And as you said, um, it's been 10 years of Next, and I want to thank all of the developers at the studio, all of the students, faculty, for uh, making this initiative the concrete pathway to make a career out of your passion and to give the opportunity to, of, to young talents to you know, have a, a perspective of all the disciplines that exist in game making and also all the career opportunities you, that you have within. And it's an excellent way of getting a sneak peek into you know, what life is like here in Ubisoft Toronto. Um, Develop at Ubisoft is a more recent program, but very, very important for us to build a more inclusive industry because it's, it's based around mentorship and learning from the studio's best and brightest. Um, and for many young talents, it's, you know, it, it gives the opportunity for the first steps in the game industry to, to be made with more confidence and more support. It can be pretty daunting. Uh, I remember back in the day when you know, I entered the industry and it was you know, completely different time and not as mature as it is now, but, but that was tough, that was tough. So we hope that, uh, um, that this really makes it easier. Um, we've had a lot of talented people come through these uh, programs and I want to give a shout out to Shaket Brosh, Josh Garcia, Jalen Grierson and Brian Zuleta, the very first winner of Next. 
uh, and they've worked on a number of our titles, Far Cry 6, Watch Dog Legion, and right now um, we're working on Splinter Cell Remake and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't even imagine how excited we are as a studio to, blit, to bring Splinter Cell back and, you know, give it to modern audiences, you know, to really cement it in the present and then really establish it for the future. It's, uh, it's part of the studio's history and identity and uh, um, you might remember a Splinter Cell Blacklist that, you know, Ubisoft Toronto shipped uh, more than 10 years ago now. It's really part of our DNA alongside Far Cry. We collaborated on a number of Far Cry titles. We released the, the last one, which was, uh, you know, a huge achievement. Um, and both of those large brands that we work on are also an integral part of the, the future of Ubisoft success. So we're, we're very happy about that. Um, as a company, um, Ubisoft, we've had a few challenging years, but we've got one of the biggest and most diverse lineups this year. We have a very strong strategy for the future based on our, our big and powerful brands and uh, ultimately a lot for players to be excited for. So we invite you to tune in to Ubisoft Forward on June 12th, where we will be revealing a lot of what's to come this year. Um, yeah, so June 12th. Mm -hmm. And as always, we were super excited to see all of the talent this year and in the last 10 years. Ubisoft Toronto will strongly keep supporting these programs to grow the industry, to make it compelling, imaginative, and, and an innovative space to work in. Uh, to work in. Hopefully, we'll have the opportunity to, um, you know, to, uh, um, to have your talents and your creativity of one of our future games. That's it. Um, we'll have a, a, a bit of time now to continue enjoying the, the brisket bar and uh, I bring it back to, uh, to, to Mr. Good Vibes, the Positive Vibes. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm completely comfortable with that name sticking, by the way. Um, as Isfahan mentioned, these programs are really instrumental to the development of our studio and the games industry here in Ontario. Uh, we have a short video that we want to share to just shed a little light on the importance of our relationship with essentially all of you. So for a decade, Next has showcased the talent of game development students in Ontario and has helped kickstart their careers. We've awarded internships across all major disciplines and we've ignited the careers of more than 79 students, I believe, at Ubisoft Toronto since 2013. So there's really no better way for us to discover new talent. From my perspective, it's tremendously exciting to work with the candidates that have been successful and have been able to join. And seeing how receptive the teams are, how happy they are. They know that we're bringing in some of the most talented people. The way that our curriculum exists actually reflects the UB values that are being uh, requested inside of these programs. And so the methodologies and ideas and practices that we teach align perfectly with UB. And so it's become this natural fit for our students entering the competition and being successful inside the competition. You know, my experience has always been phenomenal in terms of kind of uh, asking coworkers for advice or for help or anything like that. And so having just more focus on a mentorship, which Develop Ubisoft has been doing this year, um, has, I think, is just an amazing step forward. Our relationship with Ontario schools is critical to the success of these programs. It helps us discover incredible talent and helps the schools craft their curriculum based on game making reality. The program's involvement with Ubisoft Next actually probably goes right back to the roots of the program itself. Ubisoft was very much involved as a godfather of the program in terms of helping us set up the program, determine what we need to teach our students. And so when uh, Next came around, it just became a natural thing that our students would be involved. We've been super fortunate with people that have come through these programs and helped us make really great games. We love what we've seen in the last 10 years with these programs, and we're really looking forward to continuing our partnerships to keep growing Ontario's game industry in the next 10 years. Yes, yes. And now for just a little bit more insight into the impact of these programs, where's Dunvi? Tanvi Atavle, the team lead for our studio's campus and early career programs.
Thank you, Zach. Good evening, everyone. I'm so thrilled to see everyone here tonight for this fantastic celebration. I'd like to start by first congratulating all the finalists. Your hard work and your passion really stood out, and uh, we're so excited to welcome you to the studio tonight. Uh, <laughs> Ubisoft Toronto has been a proud supporter of the Ontario post-secondary education programs and we really aim to empower students to develop a career at the intersection of art and technology. So with that in mind, we developed two bespoke programs, uh, Ubisoft Toronto Next and Develop at Ubisoft. You know, we have seen both of these competitions provide a wonderful platform for students to uh, showcase their talent, to work with our studio, and to receive mentorship from our experts. We have also seen incredible success stories from both of these competitions, from long-term careers at our studios to becoming judges themselves in these competitions, and also to starting their own studios. So they have really expanded their horizons, and they have uh, really given back to the community in many different ways. So I do want to get into the competitions a little bit. This year we are marking uh, the 10th anniversary of Next, which is our studio's... Yeah. Give it up for Next. Yeah. It's a very big year for Next, and this has been our marquee competition and program, and truly a cornerstone for students to showcase their talent and to, and to really you know, create opportunities for them to showcase uh, what they have, what they bring to the studio, and the, and the value that they get from this program. It was started with the aim for early career talent to take on a new challenge, as well as to develop our relationships with the Ontario post-secondary institutions. And as we celebrate this milestone, we are looking back at many success stories. We have hired more than 85 individuals through this program. We have had over 30 schools represented on an average um, every year in the competition. Um, and they've gone on to work on six different games. Um, so many of them are still with the studio. You will hear from some of the previous winners tonight who have been judges again. Um, so, uh, and we will announce who the previous winners are. So please uh, do take the time to come chat with them and all the other judges. And the success of uh, Next really paved way for us to design and establish Develop at Ubisoft, which is our mentorship program for um, early career talent from underrepresented gender identities. The aim here really was to break barriers and create opportunities and also support developing a strong foundation for a career in video game development. Uh, in fact, half of the previous winners are judges for this year's competitions. So uh, it has, yeah. We retain all of them, they all stick around. <laughs> uh, now, both of these competitions expanded this year and um, you know, introduced a couple, we introduced a couple of new disciplines as well. Um, so the participants could take on a very, um, take on some interesting challenges that were crafted by our studio experts. We saw 400 entries from 30 different schools and the judges had some riveting deliberations and very difficult decisions to make. Uh, we have previous participants who have given it a second shot. We have first-time participants who are winning in their discipline. Uh, so anything could happen tonight, and we can't wait to announce the winners, but more importantly, to showcase all of their work to all of you. So as our studio continues to make great games, um, both, of these, both of these competitions will continue to innovate and present creative challenges. Um, and so on behalf of um, the campus and the Early Career Programs team, a massive thank you uh, to all the participants over the past decade, to the Ontario universities and colleges, to everyone in our studio, judges, mentors, experts, for always being so patient with us and, uh, and creating all of these challenges, uh, to our studio leadership team and to our support teams. We could not have done it without you. I also want to embarrass my team, uh, Isabel and Lena. Uh, <laughs> This could, not, this could not happen without both of you, so thank you so much. And uh, I will now pass it back to Zach for getting us right into the awards. One more time for Tugby. Awesome, okay. Feeling good? Comfortable? Ready to get loud? The energy's been great, we're gonna ask you to keep it going, uh, but definitely get comfortable because we have a lot to cover over the next little bit. We are gonna officially start developing Ubisoft right now. This is the third year of the competition. We've got three disciplines in this year's event, and wouldn't you know, we also had three times more submissions this year than any year previous. <laughs> 
Before we begin, though, real quick, I just want to shout out a couple of really remarkable and instrumental human beings who really helped blaze the trail to bring these events to life. Andy Schmoll and Steph Brenham. Yeah! Please stand up, stand up, stand up. Come on. We got to make their faces go nice and red. Love it. Yes. You two are incredible. You put so much into this, and it's beautiful. All right, so we are going to get this thing going. We are going to start with programming as our first discipline, and if you didn't know her before, you saw her in a video a few moments ago, a development Ubisoft winner back in 2020. Let's hear it for Shaquette Brosh. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Shaquette Brosh. I've been a gameplay programmer here at Ubisoft Toronto for just over two years. I'm truly honored to be here to present this year's finalists for the Develop Ubisoft Programming Challenge. So for this challenge, participants were given an API that could do simple things like draw lines, display images, and print text. And they were tasked with the challenge of within just a single weekend, create a game that fit the theme of space exploration. We got so many amazing submissions and creative spins on the theme that it was truly a little bit tough to pick only three finalists. But without further ado, here they are. In third place, we have Shailen Keiko Karen. Her, her code included interesting aspects like a factory class for easy game object creation, and it had many comments throughout which let the judges know about her reasoning for some of the decisions that she made. When speaking with the judges, we were able to clearly see her passion for the industry and her incredible willingness to learn and grow. Congratulations, Shailen. In second place, we have Am Gillum. She was able to implement more technical features into her code, such as an entity component system, while also making sure that the overall game was fun and exciting. The judges were even further impressed while speaking with her when we found out that she didn't actually have too much experience at C++ prior to this challenge. Congratulations, Am. <laughs> and in first place, we have Gabrielle Madden. She completely blew away all the judges with her awesome submission, which included easy to follow code, having all of the game's parameters be data driven, no memory leaks whatsoever, and it was also accompanied all by great documentation. When we got the chance to speak with her, the judges were amazed by her fantastic learning mindset and her strong knowledge of the lower level C++ specifics. Congratulations, Gabrielle. <laughs> Once again, congratulations to all of our finalists. Now I'd like to invite Gabrielle up to say a few words. just walked in. <laughs> I got here a little bit late and I just came and saw myself get announced so that was really cool. I'm glad I didn't miss that. Um, I'm super excited to be standing here. This is absolutely crazy. I actually, um, I entered the Ubisoft Next contest four years ago and didn't place. <laughs> so to enter this one now and then be standing here today finally is really, really amazing and I'm just super, super excited. Yeah, so thank you so much. Congratulations, Gabrielle. <laughs> Moving on to our next award, name a more iconic duo in game production than a programmer and a designer. Maybe you could, but for our purposes, please don't even bother. One of our very first Develop at Ubisoft winners, game designer Jalen Grierson. <laughs> My name is Jalen Gerson, and I am AI designer here at Ubisoft Toronto on the Splinter Cell remake. In, 20 <laughs> in 
in 2019, I was the winner of the very first Develop at Ubisoft game design competition, and it's honestly an honor to be back here today, not only as a judge, but to present the award for the game design category in the first in-person award ceremony since before the pandemic. So this year, participants were challenged to design a new Supremo for Far Cry 6. If you don't know, Supremos are special abilities which have unique effects helping players in combat, stealth, and other gameplay scenarios. We had many fantastic submissions this year which were creative and well thought out, and it was incredibly challenging to narrow our pool down to only three finalists. In third place, we have Chris Oral. Chris's design had a strong focus on her established design goals. Her documentation was incredibly thorough and easy to read, answering every single question which came to mind while reading. Congratulations, Chris. In second place, we have Catherine Bowie. Catherine's design showed an incredible evolution over the course of the competition, responding to feedback incredibly well. Her designs always kept accessibility at the forefront, and she demonstrated a strong teamwork mindset with a focus on very clear communication. Congratulations, Catherine. And in first place, we have Darian Schumacher. <laughs> Darian's submission were consistently strong across the entire competition. Their designs showed a good understanding of the player experience and how their designs can complement different play styles. Their submissions also showed a strong level of systemic thinking, understanding how small changes to one design can affect many features across the game, not just their own. Congratulations, Darian. And I would like to invite Darian to the stage to say a few words. Wow, this is a dream come true for me and completely unexpected as well. Um, I'd first like to thank my amazing professor, Dr. Christopher Alexander, <laughs> for putting me on this competition in the first place. And I'd also like to thank my amazing partner, Zach, for supporting me throughout the competition. Thank you so much. Awesome, congratulations, Darian. Our last award of Develop 2023 is also the first of its kind. Can't think of a better person to hand out the hardware than Jennifer. Her passion and dedication to all of her projects is seen and known by all. Let's hear it for Jennifer Owen! Hello, yes, that is me, I'm Jennifer Owen. I'm a production manager here at Ubisoft Toronto, and we checked this morning, it's officially my first three years as of this exact date. This exact date. First of many, hopefully. <laughs> and I can't think of a better way to celebrate it than speaking before you today as one of the judges at Develop at Ubisoft. Um, as it was hinted at, this is the first year we've actually offered this category, so a huge thank you to everyone involved for making it happen. This is really on you guys. I just get to take the credit at the end. <laughs> for this challenge, we asked our applicants to scope out work for their team, create a block plan to a major milestone for multiple teams, and present their findings. The twist? Information provided was littered with conflicting priorities and last minute demands, testing our applicants' ability to prioritize, problem solve, and communicate effectively. This was certainly no easy task, so I would like to take the time now to personally thank the three finalists for their incredible dedication and creativity. In third place, a person I think at this point needs no introduction, Darian Schumacher. <laughs> you can really do it all. I have to say your knowledge on game design was unparalleled to any other. You picked up that the case study was for DLC and already knew to think about 
uh, cost-saving ways uh, to reuse from the main game, which would benefit not only our timeline, but was an incredible attention to detail. Um, we all agreed you were an incredibly hard worker, and I have no doubt opportunities will continue to come your way. So thank you for your submission. And in second place, Madison Simpson. You sure know how to stand out and make logistics look like art in your presentation. You are extremely well-rounded in your submissions, not only hitting the mark, but anticipating problems and calling out mistakes I made. That's really, <laughs> thank you for that, that helped me. I used you as an example of someone to, uh, who could work through a problem effectively. Keep it coming, and I know I am excited for the career that is certainly ahead of you. And drum roll, please, because first place, Jessica Yang. Congratulations, Jessica. You, we were completely in awe of your submissions. You used multiple techniques to share your thought process, including a dialogue tree, which was a far more complex approach to that case study. But you added your own creative details, such as naming the NPCs. The wizard guard will live in my heart forever. It made the material more digestible, but also easy for us to read and follow along. And you made me smile. During your final interview, I noted how humble you were in the mistakes you made along the way and how it was already changing your thought process and approach to work outside of this competition. On behalf of myself and the rest of the judges, congratulations. <laughs> Wherever you are, you are welcome to come to the stage. anything to say but I just wanted to say that this was like such an amazing opportunity um, I really learned so much and um, during the school year while I was working on this and like balancing school and doing this as well I I really thought this was not like a task that I had to do or like something like on the side that I was like dreading to do but something that I really had fun with and for that I'm very thankful <laughs> Thank you so much, and congratulations, Jessica, as well as Darian and Gabrielle and all the developer Ubisoft finalists. Uh, hearing from the judges, you know that there were no easy decisions. Hopefully you, your friends, family, and schools are all feeling very proud. That is a wrap on development Ubisoft, but as you know, we are really and truly just getting started. And it, yes, thank you. It is time to officially kick off the 10th anniversary of Ubisoft Toronto Next. We have got seven awards to hand out tonight and some gorgeous, gorgeous visuals to accompany them. Let us get started with someone who came through this very program going way back to 2016 for a discipline then called modeling. It now goes by 3D art and he goes by Jonathan Bat. Way up there! Thank you, that was, uh, that was quite the introduction. <laughs> so, hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Batt. I am a senior 3D model artist at Ubisoft Toronto, currently working on the Splinter Cell, uh, Splinter Cell project. <laughs> and honestly, looking back to 2016, it's an honor now to be a judge on, uh, on this competition. It's one of those full circle moments. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking all those that participated. Uh, through the teachers, the schools, especially the students, otherwise we wouldn't have anything to show. <laughs> um, and this year, they really made our job difficult because they took the brief that we gave them, and I won't go through the nitty gritty de uh, details of what we designed, I'll let it show for itself through their work, but uh, yeah, we really had our work cut out for us this year. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to kick off with uh, third place, we have Dominique. So, 
Dominique's interpretation of the theme had an awesome sense of storytelling to it. You can really get a sense of what she was trying to show with this depiction. Um, and the piece was very deliberate. The mood was set appropriately, the modeling was solid, it had an air of magic and mystery to it. And yeah, like the piece speaks for itself, so congratulations. So in second place, we have Olivia. So Olivia's interpretation really stood out with all the judges, especially the awesome centerpiece that you see here, the dragon that you have over here, and the fact that this thing is built to scale. The centerpiece was built with the actual real life object in mind, and that really stood out to us because it's a level of uh, detail and dedication that you don't get to see very often. So congratulations. And last but definitely not least, we have our first place winner, Melissa. So Melissa's sub submission really set the tone right from the get-go. Uh, from the lighting to the mood and the arrangement, it really felt like a location that we could see in reality. Uh, with that being said, we did give a little hint at a location being Kensington Market. So if any of you have been there, I really do feel like this is a piece that I could see. This is a store I could walk right into. Um, and yeah, we, we found ourselves going back again and again, watching the video, finding new details here and there. And as an artist, that's just, you know, the best part of our job. Congratulations, Melissa. And at this point, we'd like to welcome you onto the stage to say a few words. Thank you. Um, I, I really don't know what to say. This is a lot of hard work, and I'm really thrilled to see like all the other work that uh, the other entrants did, and I'm, I'm really impressed with the, the work that you guys did. I want to say thank you to Daryl Malloy, my teacher, for being very encouraging with this process. <laughs> and also thank you to Chris Finley, my partner, who's been very supportive. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Congratulations. Our next challenge was for the folks who speak a language far beyond my comprehension. He is a next newcomer, but a veteran and lead programmer, Adrian Constantine Popescu. Thank you, Zach. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, super excited to be here. Uh, this is my first time, so if I miss anything out, I'm sorry. I didn't want to, but it's my first time, okay. Um, we had a blast judging all those entries. You, you guys put your effort in. We, we really appreciated the, the quality and it, it was really tough, to, to be honest, to, uh, to, to pick up uh, the finalists and the winners. Now, as opposed to art, this is a challenge about engineering, creativity, and problem solving. Every year we have a new team, which we hope Everybody knows about it, but maybe we're too old and, you know, we have to Google it. Google it. And uh, yeah, this year we chose Bomberman, but we asked you all to come up with a twist. And we wanted to give you some creative freedom in that. In the end, what are we looking for? We're looking for something that's finished, um, clear code, readable, has to be robust. We want to see any challenges you've put yourself into advanced technique, creativity, innovation, fun, smooth controls. If you have the time for art, fine, but we appreciate it, but we're not necessarily scoring that. So thank you for everyone who shared your entries with us. Um, let's see you next year. Let's try again. Now let's see the finalists. So on the third place, thank you. Uh, we have Thomas Plagakis.
So our third place, uh, place uh, entry shows us a 2D uh, continuous space bomberman where you are fighting waves of uh, zombies. Uh, the controls are smooth, bombs bounce off the wall walls, and you have a satisfying explosion taking uh, down the hordes of zombies. The code itself is clean, it's understandable, uh, with plenty of comments around. Um, Thomas is relying on his own implementation of an ECS system to drive the gameplay, and he also validated the system with a battery of tests. Um, I just don't want to say good uh, gameplay systems work on that. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for your uh, effort. We enjoyed it. Now, uh, give it up for second place, uh, Adriano Mazuko. As you can see, we are upping the challenge. We have a two-player PvP 3D Bomberman. The players have several tools at their disposals, not just simple bombs, and they can also jump above the map to land a different cell. Um, an impressive dynamic camera keeps all the scene, uh, in, keeps the action uh, focused, right? Um, and it's, it's looking pretty, pretty good. Engineering-wise, the code is very well documented. Uh, it shows good understanding of C++ uh, standards as well as supporting an ECS system. Um, the objects themselves are loaded from object files and the 3D math employed is uh, solid. Uh, thank you, Adriano. Thank you. Uh, now for uh, the moment you've all been waiting for, our 2023 next programming winner is Bijia Jiao. Her entry impressed us with the focus on being fun, technically challenging, and innovative. The focus on gameplay and player experience is there. We have a PvP game with different power-ups and additional special effects. Beyond that, we see a um, different map behavior uh, than all the other bomb Bombermans. Uh, we were immediately impressed with the particle effects, grid warping, cloth and water simulations that were shown off in this project. All this on top of a technical framework support, supporting memory pooling, ECS systems, AI pathfinding on vector fields, strong 3D maths and physics helper that allow links, dampers and simple constraints. The game specific implementations fully leverages that framework in a compact and efficient way, gluing everything together while choosing the right balance between gameplay experience and technical implementation. So let us all welcome Bijia Zhao to the scene. Thank you so much for selecting me uh, for this uh, programming winner. Uh, it's been a really fun experience in making this game. Um, when I was a kid, I was a really good Bomberman player. So I, <laughs> yeah, it's like very natural to me to make a multiplayer game, and uh, I had a lot of fun. And uh, thank you to Nick, uh, Victor, and Jerry for all the support they gave me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations, BGA. That's awesome. All right. Shifting now to the discipline that started it all, concept art. Before Next was actually called Next, the competition was known as UB Gallery. Winners got an internship, yes, but all the finalists also had their work put up in our cafeteria. It consistently dropped jaws, and the work of this year's finalists is no different. Representing the judges for concept art is 2021 concept art winner for next, Sergi Iranzo. There's Sergi, yeah! How are we doing tonight? Great, awesome, nobody sleep yet? No. No? Okay, well, uh, welcome again for the sixth time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my name is Sergi, thanks. 
I'm a concept artist here at Ubisoft, and I'll be tonight uh, walk you guys through some of the things that we've been cooking this year. So let's start with the change that we had uh, about the brief. So we decided, apparently 10 years, so it's been 90 years of the same brief, and we decided to change it to something a bit more open, almost like a, a world building exercise where our contestants could just play around with their own things uh, when it came to environments, when it came to characters, props, vehicles. So I, I hope that you guys prefer that I personally do to, to the previous uh, briefs that we had uh, in the last years. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, I think we can move on to our finalists and winner. So in third place, we have Elliot Woods. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, very strong foundational skills, uh, you know, great understanding of design. Uh, we also really appreciated the, the painterly feel. It's not something that we, especially here at Ubisoft, uh, come across. So, give it up for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the second place, we have Eric Davis. So, Erica this uh, time decided to uh, do a little bit of uh, yokai, so Japanese culture in Egypt. It was a very, very nice uh, interviewing you. You know, we, we got to see more of, of what you do. You have a great understanding of uh, workflow as well as pipeline, which it's honestly very encouraging. And you do as well have a very entrepreneurial thing to yourself. So I really hope you keep pushing that uh, because uh, chapeau. Great. Very good, All right. And finally, the moment we've been waiting for, uh, the Oscar goes to <laughs> Abhishek Arbin Das. <laughs> it was, it was great. Uh, it was very nice for. Uh, somebody who uh, has a background in science to, to get to interview you. Uh, you know, first thing I thought was like, oh, we have a civil engineer here. Um, there was, there was a, 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 a detail in, in the, the way you just presented the, the whole world, which was amazing. A very, very detailed. You thought everything through. You did too much work, perhaps. But, <laughs> You know, but hey, I guess it played, you know, in your favor. So please, everyone, welcome Abhishek to the stage. design like not really not sure what's going on and I looked up College Canada games and I found Ubisoft Toronto the act like and then I found the next competition and I saw all these amazing people doing all this amazing work and I was like you know what if I get to Canada I'm gonna join in this competition and <laughs> Thank you so much for setting like, an amazing brief. Uh, world building, say no more. That's my job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like amazing work by everyone. And it's been really cool to be here. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Awesome stuff. All right, to stick around for 10 years, you need to be able to adapt and change. What's up, Toronto, next? is no different, it continues to iterate. This year, introducing game design as a new category in the competition. It's very exciting, thank you for the one woo. Appreciate that, Isabel, thank you. 
Uh, for this milestone moment, there is literally no one better to take the stage than someone who has given so much time and energy to both Next and develop at Ubisoft, Julia Santin! Yeah! Hello, everybody. So, like Zach said, my name is Julia Santin. I am a progression designer at Ubisoft Toronto, and I am working on X Defiance. So I've been at the studio for just over two years now. I joined in 2020 after winning uh, the Game Design Challenge at Develop at Ubisoft. <laughs> so this is our first year having uh, game design as a challenge for next. So I'm super excited to be here today to announce our finalists and our winner. So for the challenge, participants had to design a new companion from any Far Cry game. So companions are sidekicks that have their own advantages, abilities, and functionalities that aid players in different gameplay situations depending on their needs and a play style. So now before I announce our finalist and winner, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who uh, sent us any submissions. We were really impressed by everyone's work. It was extremely difficult for us to pick a top three, let alone a winner. So I'd encourage all of you to come back, participate next year. We can't wait to see how you've improved and grown as designers. Woo! So uh, I would love to announce our third place winner is Zane. He had an extremely uh, strong submission with a well-defined purpose, goal, and design. He did an incredible job outlining uh, how his companion behaved and fit into the pre-existing game of Far Cry 6, taking into account different gameplay situations and play styles. He has an undeniable passion for game design, and it was evident throughout um, his presentations and all of his submissions. And we can't wait to see where your career takes you. So congratulations. <laughs> So in second place, we have Lucas. So Lucas's design was clear, clean, and professional. He identified what was missing in the current roster and designed a companion that seamlessly fulfilled that need and fits perfectly into Far Cry 5. He designed with a purpose, relating all of his companion's features back to the design key pillars and overall goals. His strength in designing for the player experience stood out amongst the rest. To say that we were impressed with your submission would be an understatement. So congratulations, Lucas. <laughs> and for our winner, I'd love to give a huge congratulations to Jinsu. <laughs> So his design tackled every box that we were looking for. He had a clear understanding of the purpose of a companion, was able to identify the exact problem uh, he was trying to solve, and easily showed us how his companion was the solution. Uh, he thoroughly thought out his design, digging deep into his companion's abilities, controls, synergy, systematic design, and outlining what choices the player would have to make in different gameplay situations. We're so excited to help you grow and develop your career. So congratulations. <laughs> we would love to have you come down and accept your award. Hello everyone, uh, I'd like to congr congratulate all the finalists, uh, Zane and Lucas, I got a chance to talk to you guys, loved your design, and I also want to thank my family, friends, my mentors at Sheridan and Bell, and lastly, I just want to thank everyone at Ubisoft Next for organizing such an amazing event. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Love it. Congratulations, Junsu. I gotta say, exceptional woos from this audience. Yeah.
By my count, I think we've got three awards left to hand out. We're going to stay with design for this one. We're going from companions to play with to spaces to play in. I am proud to bring to the stage someone who has really made an impressive mark on this studio in very short order. Last year's level design winner and next, Kamila Kukulski. Yeah! I gotta say, Zach, those introductions are absolutely phenomenal. Give it up for Zach! So hello, my name is Camila Kukulski. I am a level designer at Ubisoft Toronto. I received first place in the Level Design Next competition last year. <laughs> and honestly, I am super excited to be here today, not only as a judge, but also to present the award for this year's Level Design competitors. <laughs> Love the crowd also, cheering for everything. Woohoo! Let's keep the energy up! Yes! So, congratulations to everyone who submitted their work for this year's competition. You were all asked to create a document outlining a level for a linear action adventure game, which then you were asked to make into a playable block mesh with a curveball to make it wide linear. Changes happen all the time in game development, and we wanted to see how our competitors would roll with the punches, and we were impressed. Xavian, David, Josh, and I had a blast reading your documents and playing your levels. You should all be proud of the work that you've done. Now. <laughs> now. To announce the winners of the 2023 Level Design Next competition, in third place, we have Mary Ellen Daniels. Her level had a fantastic establishing shot and did a great job with using lighting to highlight some really cool side paths and wonderful world building which all came together to create a fascinating level all around. She also had very clean, easy to read documentation and was thorough in her breakdown of her level. Congratulations, Mary. In second place, we have Zach DeBoer. whose level had some great traversal challenges that were very fun. They, he, they designed so many interesting ways of approaching the level and provided many avenues. We were specifically impressed by his skill in taking feedback and iterating on his level and documentation. That took him above and beyond. It's honestly a skill that can't be understated. So congratulations, Zach. <laughs> Now, in first place, we have Ken Stevens. <laughs> Ken blew us away. His skill level was clean and consistent. It was easy to navigate and was just fun. He showcased his skill in crafting a world and creating fun puzzles and really balanced the level well. When we got a chance to chat with Ken, he was really impressed us with his solid foundation and thorough understanding of level design. His level played well, it looked good, it felt good to, traver to traverse, and his documentation was fantastic. This win is well deserved, so please join me in welcoming Ken to the stage. <laughs> for this. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for choosing my level. I mean, and I just wanted to congratulate everybody uh, who's here. 
the stuff that I've seen tonight is just, it, it's blown me away. You all are so talented. Um, I've also, I'd also like to thank my wonderful girlfriend that's here that was able to come here today. And my rock, you, uh, you really got me through this. Um, I'd like to thank the judges, uh, wherever you are. <laughs> um, your feedback has been amazing, um, and it really, really helped me um, hone my craft. Um, and, and that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dodging balloons, congrats, Ken. At Ubisoft, we always try to put the player first, and fundamental to that is solid UX design, a discipline that has become one of the most critical in game production. So please, help me welcome UX director, Juan Fernando. Thank you, Zach. Oh, stop. Hi, I'm Ruan. It's nice to be here. Uh, as you heard, I'm the UX director at Ubisoft Toronto, and I'm really excited to be representing this category because this marks another first for the next competition. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> On cue, beautiful. Before I continue, I'd like to thank two people who were really instrumental in this process. They helped with the creation of the task as well as the judging of the uh, assignments and the submissions. So please help me say thank you to Annie Wang and Jacob Brown. It works. <laughs> so let's go on to the challenge. The challenge presented several problems. So firstly, we asked for an unconventional quest management system, and the interface specifically. Additionally, we asked the applicant to invent and define a hypothetical new game into which their design would fit. Now, the reason we do that is to allow the, the applicants to paint themselves into their own trap. So it's a challenge that we don't usually face as UX designers, but we wanted to give this additional wrinkle to see how uh, the applicants themselves create problems to solve. As an added complication, as if that's not enough, uh, the applicants were not allowed to use common directional indicators that we're really familiar with in games in the HUD. Heads up display, you all know what that is. Uh, so no such things as arrows, uh, directional indicators, navigation pathing, off the table, not allowed. So let's see what our finalists presented us. So in second place, we have Thomas Chen. So Thomas blew us away with his brilliant written and uh, presentation skills. He brought some really original ideas for in-world directional indicators, very diegetic, an innovative focus mode, uh, with a conversational AI companion who delivered directional hints via speech. This was a fairly new thing for us. It was really intriguing. Uh, of all the applicants, we felt that Thomas had the clearest vision of the game he was designing for, so that's really exciting to see. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have an incredible career. You're so intelligent. You're so easy to talk to. Your brain's always going a million miles a minute. I'm so proud of you. Uh, congratulations, Thomas Chen. <laughs> Killing it. And in first place, in first place, Jay Lee. So Jay fascinated us with a design that initially felt like it wouldn't fit the genre that he picked. So once we started to talk to him and understand it more, its cleverness became more and more clear. So his quest system represented by a calendar uh, that in turn mirrored the life of the bounty hunter for this narrative that he built for his game. Just, it sat so well, it felt so intelligent, and it felt like it fit the thematics really well. So, if there was one thing that Jay nailed, is that he surprised us in a way we never expected. As jaded game developers, we don't get surprised very often, and to be surprised in the submission really sealed a deal for us. So please help me in welcoming Jay Lee to the stage to accept the first ever UX design internship at Ubisoft Toronto. Jay Lee, come on down.
thank you to Ubisoft Toronto. This is such a great opportunity. Thank you for the judges for creating a brief. That was so fun to do. And uh, uh, shout out to my girlfriend, Jenny, who supported me through everything. <laughs> thank you. Congrats, Jay. We've got one more ward to dole out tonight. Always a crowd pleaser, just like the judge representing it. This is someone who knows how to make things move, myself included. We were in a bike ride last year. We raised $80,000 for cancer research. But I thought I was going to quit with about 70 kilometers left. This man stuck with me. Help me get to the finish to join the rest of the team. I will always be in debt to Dwee. Let us talk some animation. Let us hear from Dwee Win. There he is, my hero. Thank you, Zach. Looking forward to doing that ride again this year, right? So, it's time, to, time to start fundraising. So, Hi, everyone. My name is Dwee, uh, lead animator at the studio. I've been here. I think I've passed my 10-year milestone now as well. Um, thank you. Uh, came, came in the late stages of working on Splinter Cell Blacklist, and it's been poetic now to be working on the uh, Splinter Cell remake and uh, having a lot of fun with that. So. So yeah, big thank you to um, you know, the other judges. I'm not sure if they're here on the animation side, Renee, Santi, Tony. Uh, these things take a lot of time for not just us, but all the judges involved, um, all the people that have joined as well. I know it's a huge commitment when you have school projects, you know, assignments, marks, deadlines, and all that. So to squeeze this in here um, and produce such incredible stuff, um, it's it just shows like really how next level you guys can be with it, and you know, already being so so focused and professional, um, it's going to carry you a lot more uh, in your career. Um, whether you make it through this or not, uh, yeah, it's a big testament to that. So, yeah, so for animation, uh, I've been doing this since it started. Uh, it was a little bit of a late addition, I think since 2016 we've been doing animation. Uh, we had cinematics, we had gameplay. Uh, every year we're trying to keep uh, contestants on their toes, you know, so people aren't doing things ahead of time. Animation takes time to do. Um, and, you know, sometimes doing something geared towards games isn't always uh, appealing to folks. So we try to really keep things broad. Last year, uh, we, we gave people a single prompt, uh, which was bump, and it was really exciting to judge that and see the different things that people would do. Um, in previous years, we were kind of doing, like, combos and um, dialogue, and I think to keep things fresh for animators is always a good thing. Uh, so this year, our theme, uh, we decided to go with that pr uh, single word uh, or single prompt again, uh, and it was squeezed this year, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, the, the finalists this year. Um, starting with third place, we have John Carpino. Super fun, yeah, really creative setup with the uh, rock being a part of the creature. Uh, the, the contrast and the dynamic between the two. Clearly the squeeze moment of trying to like get through the ground there. A lot of fun, uh, a lot of that timing and squash and stretch really showing in there. So really nice work. Uh, big kudos to John. I know this isn't the first time you've joined and you are one of those folks that year after year the work is just better and better. And I know this is just the, the beginning of your career, so yeah. <laughs> All right, now in second place is Chao Wei Liu. Yeah, so some great alien nostalgia. Love me some aliens. Uh, he added a really dynamic angle, and you know, sometimes we say, don't play with the camera, but it really works in this scene. You get just a hint of what's going on. Animating, you know, a creature is difficult. Animating humans is difficult. We all know what humans look and move like. Uh, really trying that challenge of using the tail aspect, constraining it, is a lot more complicated than you may think of uh, doing all that, manipulating the weapon, um, and, and still trying to 
juggle all these technical things while making something just feel natural um, is, is super tough, especially with the time limits that, that I have in the schedules, but uh, he did such a great job. So congrats, Chowie. All right, and last but not least is our first place animation winner, Xiang Yu Chen. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Yeah, so some really great comedic timing on this one. Uh, you can sort of see all the beats. Um, that, that moment where she just kind of gets frustrated and goes to it. I think, you know, all, um, when you look at it the first time, you just have that chuckle, you get that sense. Just those, that angry little stack back actually for us was one of those moments that really sung. Um, and, and when you just want to see it over and over again um, and, and just sort of like live in that moment, I think the, that worked really well for this. And, uh, you know, sometimes doing things complicated, you know, they, they had roller skates, so you could say, well, they weren't walking and stuff, but, you know, there's all the nuance that was in the other character. There's all the little flaps and details. And uh, yeah, they just really nailed it uh, from start to finish with this one. So great job, um, Xiang Yu, on this one. I think I don't need to say, so come down and collect your award. Whoa, thank you. So exciting. Uh, I didn't prepare this, so just special thanks to Ubisoft and uh, my friends and the family who helped me. Thank you. Amazing. Congrats on you and to all of our winners and finalists. Thank you to all the schools, the students, the judges, all the people, all the incredible teams who contributed to making tonight something special. Campus and early career programs. There you are, Tan V. <laughs> Nicely done. Lena, Isabel, great job. Awesome stuff. I do want to shout out my own team as well. Communications, we got a whole bunch of people sprinkled throughout. Uh, great job. Thumbs up, June, killing it. Yeah! And our events folk, Danica couldn't be here this evening, but we do have Mia, and Mia's been exceptional, working on one leg tonight, amazing. IT, operations, really so many, so many wonderful humans who helped make this event run super smoothly. And I gotta say, we did pretty well for time. There were, there were some bets going on, and we're, we're under, we're good, we're in a good spot. For all of our finalists, there are prize packs that we wanna make sure you do go home with before you leave. Find Isabel or go over to Lincoln Logs, which is right over there. There's some sweet stuff in there you definitely don't want to forget. Uh, stick around for a while, make some friends, eat some more food, have some fun times until 8 o'clock, at which point we're closing the door, so you got to be out before that happens. <laughs> On behalf of Ubisoft Toronto, thank you so much for being here and making these programs so incredible. Please give it up for yourselves as well. So much love throughout the evening. <laughs> been amazing. It has been amazing. All the winners, we want to make sure we get a nice big group photo right over there by that wall on that side. Jordan is here taking shots. And actually, a fun fact about Jordan, he's an incredible photographer. His first job with us was for Next. I don't know how many years ago. Many moons ago. So many moons ago. Always outstanding work. Thank you, Jordan. While we are getting up to stretch and move around, let's just revisit some of the re reels from the incredible work from this year's next winners, shall we?